you know, I think one of the first steps is to make sure that Asian Pacific Islanders and other communities that experience disparities in this region are engaged early and often and in a meaningful way. That means that they're helping to shape the values and the process by which our region makes major investments in economic development, in housing and transportation, and the basic livability of our communities. So Asian Pacific Islanders come from many different backgrounds, and we're really a community of contrasts where some do very, very well. Like my family, I grew up in Clackamas County in a multiracial family, uh, Chinese and white. But many come today as immigrants and refugees and still face real barriers to educational opportunity. And our English as a second language programs have not been serving our communities very well. And we would like to see more accountability and better support for the programs that serve really the most vulnerable in our community. And those are those who are in our ESL programs. So Asian Pacific Islanders uh, live all across the region, and every region has different, uh, uh, has different groups of Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, historically, the region and our local cities have not supported or invested <coughs> uh, housing in a culturally specific way for Asian and Pacific Islanders. We've seen the divestment in Chinatown that has led to um, a major change in the old town, Chinatown area. We see new areas popping up where high concentrations of Asian Pacific Islanders live in East Portland and in Washington County, yet we don't see a strategy uh, that really is defined and supported to ensure that the seniors and other folks who need uh, quality affordable housing can access it. So Asian Pacific Islanders uh, make major contributions, particularly as small business owners. And many of these small business owners uh, reside within uh, districts and jurisdictions where there are opportunities to help get a leg up on getting uh, their uh, main streets improved, to having their business districts become higher profile. And one of the major barriers to engaging these folks is around language. And so we'd love to see uh, a lot of improvement in terms of how our communities and our civic governments engage with our small businesses across language. So Asian and Pacific Islanders have been in Oregon for many generations, but today we're over 215,000 in the state of Oregon and about 175,000 in the four county area around Metro Portland. We have um, a long history of coming as immigrants and also as refugees. Uh, the first wave of folks who came over the last 200 years, primarily from China and Japan uh, and Korea, um, they have settled all across the region. Um, but today, more of the newer immigrants and refugees are settling in East Multnomah County, particularly Southeast Asians. And many South Asian immigrants, such as folks from India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, as well as Filipinos and Koreans are settling in Washington County. Asian and Pacific Islanders are the fastest growing uh, ethnic minority in the country. And in Oregon, they're the second fastest growing after Latinos. Yeah, Asian Pacific Islanders are truly a community of contrasts. In our public schools, the Oregon Department of Education tracks 107 different languages spoken by Asian and Pacific Islander families. And so we know that there's a whole range of cultural and linguistic uh, and ethnic Asian and Pacific Islander communities that are uh, in many ways very, very distinct from one another. Our community can be uh, seen through many different lenses. One is the different waves of immigrants who've come. We've had immigrants who've come for over 200 years uh, who have settled and become very successful here in the region. Uh, and that would include people like my Chinese uh, ancestors. But then we've had folks who've come in the 70s and 80s uh, after the war on Vietnam, from Vietnam and Cambodia, Laos, uh, Hmong, Mien, uh, who haven't had the same opportunities and have faced many disparities in the region. And even today, one of the largest groups of refugees 
comes from Asian countries, both from Bhutan, Nepal, uh, Burma, and Iraq. And so we know that these communities um, are really a part of the fabric of Asian Pacific Islanders, but also have many distinct differences that need to be identified and addressed. So many of our communities who come as refugees, particularly folks from Burma and Bhutan and Iraq, uh, really face some challenges in terms of being able to get uh, settled, to be engaged meaningfully in their neighborhoods, uh, and to have the kind of social supports that will allow them to be successful. And so the human uh, and social services and public health and health, health um, services, sorry, uh, so, the, so the health and human services that are um, available to these communities are really critical in terms of providing a stable foundation for them to be able to be successful. Organizations like ERCO and the Asian Health and Service Center provide really quality, culturally specific services with bilingual and bicultural staff. Um, many people who also themselves were immigrants or refugees. And these programs often are on the chopping block, and, but they're also proven to be very uh, efficient and very successful with a high return on investment for our communities.